Hello and welcome to this lesson on LDRs, thermistors and resistors. By the end of this lesson I'm looking for you to be able to do three of these things. Explain how the resistance of LDRs and thermistors depend on light level and temperature. Recall that when resistors are connected in parallel that the total resistance is reduced. And for higher tier I'm looking for you to be able to calculate the total resistance of resistors connected in parallel. First, let's start off by looking at an LDR. An LDR stands for Light Dependent Resistor. This means that basically it's a special type of resistor whose resistance changes with light levels. This means that when the light intensity is low, the re resistance of the resistor is high. And when the light intensity is high, the resistance is low. So, with changing light levels, the resistance changes. This is a very useful property because the LDR can be used as a switch with changing light. For example, you could use it to switch on your security lights when the light levels get low. LDRs can be placed in a potential divider circuit to provide such a switch. Last lesson we saw that in a potential divider we can use two resistors, R1 and R2, to split a voltage and produce an output voltage. And we also discussed the idea of using a variable resistor for R2 so that we could change that output voltage in some way. So if we replace R2 with an LDR, we have a way of changing the output voltage depending on the light intensity. So in the example where we want to switch on some security lights, when the light levels are low, the resistance of the LDR is obviously high and that means there's a high output voltage and this high output voltage can be used to switch on the circuit for the security lights. But we want these security lights to switch off automatically when it gets light. So as the light levels increase, the resistance and the output voltage falls, just like in the graph. As the output voltage falls, it gets to a level where the security light circuit will switch off and the lights will go out. So that leads us to what is a thermistor. Well, it's very similar to an LDR. Its resistance changes, but this time it changes with temperature levels. When the temperature is low, the resistance is high, and when the temperature is high, the resistance becomes low, and it follows a similar sort of pattern to the LDR. Similar to an LDR, the thermistor can be used as a switch for another circuit. So for example, you could use it to switch on the heater when the temperature gets low. So just like an LDR, a thermistor can be placed in a potential divider. The thermistor takes the place of R2, and what happens is the output voltage then can depend on the actual temperature levels. So when it's cold and the temperature levels are low, you have a very high resistance and this means that the output voltage is also very high and you could use it to switch on a heater. Then as the temperature levels increase the resistance falls and so does the output voltage again until you get to a level where the heater would then be switched off. So hopefully you can see that by placing LDRs and thermistors into a potential divider we've created a very simple sensor a light sensor or a heat sensor that can then be used to switch on an important circuit such as a lighting circuit or a heating circuit. Finally, we need to look at how resistors are connected in parallel. In a previous lesson we looked at how resistors connected in series affected the current flowing in the circuit. Components can be connected in parallel and this means that they're connected in separate branches within the circuit, so not all on the same loop. This provides more than one way for the current to flow. And the interesting thing about this is it actually lowers the overall resistance of the circuit. A good analogy for this is to think of a road system. If you have just a single carriageway, like a series circuit, then obviously you get con traffic congestion, which slows down the flow of traffic. This is similar to a series circuit and adding resistance slows down the current. However, if you add more lanes to the road, then traffic will flow more easily. And this is a good analogy to use when thinking about parallel circuits. The more branches there are, the easier it is for the current to flow around the circuit, 
and so the resistance overall is lowered. That's all you need to know for foundation, but for higher tier, you need to be able to work out the total resistance of the resistors in parallel, and you need to use this equation. 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on. So let's look at a worked example. In the circle on the right here, we have three resistors in parallel. Let's say they had these values, 2 ohms, 2 ohms, and 6 ohms. So how would we use the equation? The difficulty that most students have when dealing with this equation is that we're dealing with reciprocals. We just have to remember how to add fractions. So let's start by putting the values from the diagram into the equation. So this is our starting point, and we need to remember that when we're adding fraction, we need a common denominator. So I need to turn our 1 over 2s into, what, something over 6s. Now 1 over 2 is equal to 3 over 6. So in creating a common denominator, my equation becomes this. 3 over 6 plus 3 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which is equal to 7 over 6. So if 1 over RT is equal to 7 over 6, RT must be equal to 6 over 7 ohms, or 0 0.86 ohms if you do it on the calculator. So that brings us to the end of today's lesson, and I've shown you three important things. The first thing was that I showed you the characteristics of two special resistors, the thermistor and the LDR. We then looked at how we could connect those into a potential divider circuit to provide some very simple sensing. And then finally, we looked at how resistors in parallel can lower the overall resistance in the circuit. And I've shown you how to calculate the total resistance that that provides.